constructed, according to modern archaeologists, between the bluestone erections of 5,000 years ago and the sarsen erections of 4,400 to 4,200 years ago. The Neolithic and Bronze Age structure we call today Stonehenge, 8 miles or 13 kilometers north of the edge of Salisbury Plain on the United Kingdom Isle of Great Britain, is alike in architectural schematic to the conical, thatched, wood girder, wattle and daub, roundhouses of Bronze and Iron Age Britain, as well as to the Iron Age wheelhouses further north on the island in Scotland, such as the Atlantic roundhouses of the Orkney Islands, like those at Dunringgill on the Isle of Skye, Dun Carloway on the Isle of Lewis, Piro Wall on the Isle of Westray, Jarlshoff in the archipelago of the Shetland Islands, Moorstein and Castle Bloody on the island of Chapinsay, as well as others standing alone, isled roundhouses throughout Mesolithic, Neolithic, and Bronze Age Orkney, Scottish inhabitation. The Neolithic farmstead at the Knapp of Hawar on Papa Westray may have once been joined above sea level to the Westray Island culture that erected the links of Noltland, Moorstein, and Castle Bloody, and dates from no later than 5,700 years ago. While Scara Bray on mainland Orkney Island's west coast consists of eight stone structures, closely clustered as in a community of dwellings, was occupied from roughly 5,180 to 4,500 years before now. However, whereas few of these other simple standing stone mineheers or complex stone proto-cities possess perfect symmetry, let alone archaeoastrological use. The site we now call Stonehenge did, and thus it is indicated it may have served as a form of religious ceremonial temple for the region's religion of the time. What we can deduce of this religion we cannot therefore detach from including the architecture of Stonehenge as indicative of their general mind state. So, from the by now ruins of Stonehenge, let us reassemble the original schematic design, as it was intended by its earliest builders, that we may understand something more of its possible use as a structure for study of the skies. The general consensus now is that the altar stone, set into place around 4,600 years ago, carved as a single six-ton sandstone, erected upright to a height of almost two meters, served as a location for ritual cremation ceremonies commemorated at that location from some 8,500 years ago onward with possibly originally Scandinavian area cultural influence on the earliest farmers who, around 5,500 years ago, were clearing the wooded landscape following constructing a causeway enclosure and long barrow tombs nearby. Around the altar stand five trilithons, consisting of twin stone posts topped by a horizontal lintel stone, all of dressed sarsen Welsh sandstone, approached from a gap between them, opposite the altar, facing toward the northeast. The pair of trilithons on either side of this opening are the shortest, being around 6 meters 20 feet tall, followed by the middle pair of slightly taller height, 
and then the single trilithon behind the altar, facing toward the southwest, standing at its maximum some 7.5 meters, 25 feet tall. A half circle of 30 upright, 1 meter, 3 feet 3 inches tall Saracen stones, capped by 30 lintel stones, surrounds the five major trilithons, opening towards the southwest, where the opposite half, necessary to complete the circle, is absent. The fact stone hinges southwest to northeast axis of symmetrical orientation aligns to the sunrise in midsummer now may in fact be only coincidental due to the fact that some 5,000 years ago or so, when it was initially erected, the exact orientation of sunrise on midsummer may have been located along the horizon elsewhere than where it occurs today. The changing of sunrise and sunset locations over the eons and many millennia being due to the precession of Earth's polar axial tilt, the so-called wobble, causing the gradual zodiacal shift of the 24,000 year long solar day, known for being opposite the direction along the tropical equator from the order followed through the signs per season annually. The pentagonal arrangement of the five primary trilithon stone gateways, however, cannot be considered coincidental, and was definitely intended on the part of the site's builders to commemorate a ritual entryway into a sacred space, ascending toward the foot of the altar stone. That this pentagonal nature was intentional cannot be argued, considering that in no design has there been even once speculated a sixth such Saracen trilithon blocking the northeast entrance. This entrance to the five gates stands upon one leg of the pentagon that is formed with one of each of the five trilithons at its five corners. The altar stone stands slightly closer to the largest of the five trilithons than at the exact center of this regular pentagon shape. Both the positioning of the entryway and the offsetting from exact center of the altar stone imply to the speculative researcher the presence of an individual participant within the ritual space as being requisite to complete the pattern in full.